ESPN welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. On the second day of 1982, the Miami Dolphins, then annual title pursuit, was once again set within the balmy confines of the Orange Bowl. This time, Don Coriel's San Diego Chargers visited for an AFC Divisional Playoff Contest. Unlike most playoff games, the pregame hype was to be surpassed, exposing many prognosticators as mere imposters. We have, even have a celebrity down here. Keith Jackson showed up. Keith, what are you doing at a pro football game? Well, I tell you, this is going to be a good one because I tell you, you get those big boys racking them down. There's some head cracking going on today. And I tell you, they're at San Diego Chargers and somebody's going to bumble. And I tell you, it's going to be a good barn burner down in the Orange Bowl. Danny Fouts and David Woodley and all those other big boys. Head cracking going on today, Henry. The teams were storied, the coaches legendary, and the contrast between the conservative Dolphins and the pass-happy Chargers couldn't be better defined. The Chargers possessed perhaps the most explosive offense in league history. Under the aptly named Air Coriel, quarterback Dan Fouts and teammates led the league in scoring. We knew that, uh, at least offensively, that we were unstoppable. The problem that we have with San Diego is they had so many good players. They had so many weapons. Among the weapons was all-world tight end Kellen Winslow, the AFC's reception leader with 80. But while the attack was extraordinary, the defense was porous, ranking near the bottom and often allowing teams to match their powerful offense touchdown for touchdown. I think probably our weakness was that uh, um, our offense scored so quick. <laughs> and they put us on the field um, a while, so uh, we would eventually wear down. Known as the Killer Bees, the Miami defense was among the league's elite. The young squad had allowed just 27 total points in their previous three games. Offensively, Don Shula's team was led by a quarterback tandem called Woodstrock, composed of young David Woodley and veteran Don Strock. Woodley is a great athlete playing quarterback for us and had, and had some big games. Anytime that Woodley had a tough time, I always had Strzok that I could go to. The combination of uh, Woodley and Strzok gave us uh, two weapons that, that I could utilize where I, where I best saw fit. Offensively, we knew that we had as much firepower as they did. We felt any game coached by Coach Shula at that level in the playoffs was going to be a tough game. We prepared like it was going to be one of these old-time old-fashioned championship heavyweight bouts. No limit on rounds, gloves were off. We're gonna go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, slug it out, and just when you think you're gonna have a knockout, we knew you weren't gonna knock that guy out. Chandler comes to the 50, Chandler to the 45, the 40, Chandler to 35, the 37. I think it was pretty special being on the field with so many people who were determined not to lose. The field it is complete. The lateral back at the 20, the 10, the 5, into the end zone, touchdown. Uh, on the sideline, you you know that you're involved in something special. I was tested, and I met that test for that day. Just the length of that game, the heat and humidity, just magnified the type of contribution he made. There was just this reservoir of energy, uh, and you'd get tired, but man, as soon as that ball snapped, uh, the adrenaline would kick in, and you'd go into overdrive. We used to say what was the best game, but certainly for us, that was a game that we'll treasure for the rest of our lives. When we return, the opening kickoff. Welcome back to the NFL's Greatest Games. Who 
Uwe von Schumann's about to kick it. 1982 gets underway with Tom Kelly to call it. Thank you, John DeMott. The kick is high but short, coming to Brooks, who takes it at the four. Middle of the field to the 10. He's at the 15, the 20, hit and knocked off his pins, rolled down at about the 23-yard line, and down to make the hit, first of all, was Steve Potter, in to make the hit on Brooks, and it'll be San Diego's ball. Chargers first and 10. They'll take over on the Charger 22-yard line. Starting offensively for San Diego, the guys who got him here. Dan Fouts will be the quarterback. We haven't got time in a game broadcast to go over all the records that he uh, put up on the boards this year, but he, they are abundant to be sure. High formation, Capaletti in motion, pitch to Muncie on the sweep left. He's at the 25 to the 26, maybe the 27-yard line. A gain of five, it'll be second and five, and the big quarterback out of Oregon is just now reaching his prime. Barring an injury, his career is just beginning to unfold. Second and 11, Fouts is back to throw. Looking, dumps it to Muncie at the 15. At the 20, gets away up to the 25, still on his feet. Dancing down and out of bounds at the 28-yard line. Flag throwing everywhere. And it is going to be a face mask, I believe, against Miami. First down at the 34, Fouts is back to throw. A lot of times, steps out of the pocket now, running to the right side, looks, throws downfield, caught by Winslow at midfield and steps out of, now they're saying he was out of bounds when he caught it. Oh, I see what the problem, Winslow went off the field, came back on to catch All it. All right. No score, we've just got the opening series underway. Chargers moving left to right across your radio dial. Fouts back to throw, gets uh, a little pressure, throws downfield. He's got Chandler at the 40, 35, 30. Still on his feet, down to the Miami 23-yard line. Talk about your big play. Well, I guess to the 23, first and 10, San Diego. And this is exactly what Coach Shula said in his pregame remarks this week. The Dolphins can't do. There they had the Chargers virtually stop, making mistakes. Then they give up the big play downfield. The one thing the Chargers do so well, everybody in the yard knows they're going to do it. 47 yards on that completion. Wide to the left is Joyner. Chandler right. Muncie the lone setback. Faust gives to Muncie. Sweep to the right. At the 30. Up. Ended at the 30 at the 25-yard line. Driving in there was Fulton Walker, the rookie from West Virginia. And he hit Muncie right at the knees and turned him top notch for toenails. Mercy. Capaletti and Muncie in the backfield. Winslow in motion. Pitch to Muncie trying to go outside. Gets hit, gets away. He's at the 15. He forward progress. I don't know whether he's got the first down. We'll wait for the officials to mark it. Walker was there again. And they're going to put it at around the 14. And that'll be very, very close to a first down. But apparently not enough as uh, Benerska's coming on the field. And Rolf Benerska will be hitting about a 32-yarder. Luther to hold. The line is set. From the far hash mark, the snap, it's down, roll pits it, it's got the distance, and it is good. And at 9.49 remaining in this opening period, the score here at the Orange Bowl in Miami, San Diego 3, and the Dolphins nothing. On their first series, the Dolphin offense would attempt to match their opponent's success. But problems plagued them from the very first snap. The snap and the handoff behind the line. Louis Kelcher is in to make the hit and drop the running back, Franklin, for a loss back at about the 23-yard line. Get us a sack and strip that ball, man. Third and four. The ball is at the 33 of Miami. Woodley, the quarterback, now getting chased out of the pocket, rolling to his right, gets hit and is knocked down. Leroy Jones just rolled right over the top of Woodley, and he had help as Gary Big Hands Johnson was there and Kelcher coming up from behind. With negative yardage on their first series, Miami was forced to punt. Miami's going to punt it, and Oros has come on. Gets the snap, not much of a rush, and hits it. A low end over end. Coming down, taken at the 45. Chandler comes to the 50. Chandler to the 45, the 40. Chandler at the 35, the 30, still on his feet. At the 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown. 55-yard return of that punt by Chandler for the touchdown. Hank Bauer made a block at the 30-yard line that knocked that one loose. My job was to kick out the contain man, and I couldn't have broke a pane of glass as hard as I hit him, but all of a sudden I felt this whoosh on my tail end, and there's Wes Chandler in the end zone. Anytime you're in a championship caliber type game like we were in, you know, the kicking game usually makes the difference. And we'll see now about the try for the extra point, and the snap, it's down, roll hits it, it's high up, and it's good. The Chargers on top of the Dolphins. It's San Diego 10, Miami nothing. 
And now, back to the NFL's greatest games. Trailing 10 to nothing, it didn't take very long for matters to get even worse for the Dolphins. But there's Gassette to kick. Rolf advances on the football and hits it. It's high and short. Bessolo coming up. Now it's going to be Walker who slips and takes a Miami bounce. The Chargers fall on it, and I think San Diego's going to recover the ball because one of the Dolphins hit it. Indeed, it was our ball because it had gone 10 yards. It was like an onside kick. Rolf hit a great nine iron that backed up. It hit in front of their wedge or hit behind or around their wedge, uh, who are just basically a bunch of big, dumb, ugly guys holding hands with their heads down and probably didn't know the rules that they had, that it was a live ball once it goes 10 yards. And I, I'm looking at the ball, and there it is on the ground. Going, I think this is ours. This is us. Th this can't be happening. And it's bad enough that, that we can't score on offense, and now we can't even return a kick. And as it turns out, the Chargers are going to have the ball again deep in Miami territory at the 29-yard line. Chandler wide right, Winslow in motion, Joyner left, the pitch to Muncy, going to throw the ball, he puts it in the end zone, it is no good. Waiting for the ball was Chandler. Great and play he by jumped, Blackwood. He would have had it. He waited for it to come to him, and Blackwood batted it away, or Muncy would have had a touchdown toss to Chandler, who made the one mistake of not leaping in the air. It was a jump ball, and Chandler waited for it to come down. Super effort by Lyle Blackwood. Hey, let's go! Let's come on, boom! Chargers looking to get more. Back to split, bounce to Winslow. Winslow down to the one-yard line. Just a quick little look in as Roan was there to make the stop on the big tight end out of Missouri. What a great play call that was, John. Just a quick look at the big tight end, and Fouts actually just kind of lobbed it to him. At 6'5", he's an inviting and talented target. It's going to be first and goal, San Diego, at the one-yard line. Tough part now. There's the pitch anything. back to Muncy on the sweep, and Muncy will walk into the end zone out in front, Winslow and Capaletti, and a lot of green jerseys left in disarray, and Muncy literally walked in, escorted like a big carrier with a raft of destroyers around him, and across the way, the gold and blue of San Diego up cheering, and that's the only crowd you see waving here in the Orange Bowl. Try for the extra point now. Luther to hold. The snap is high. He's got it down. Vanerska puts it up. It's good. What a first period it's been. With 3.58 remaining here in the first period. San Diego 17, Miami nothing. Up next, the Charger onslaught continues. Welcome back to the NFL's greatest games. Think about the way their defense played. Their defense actually played well enough. You know, the, the, it's hard to overcome those kicking game errors, or especially early on in the ball game, that's going to give you, you know, what, 17 points? And I'm thinking, we better get going. This is going to be a little embarrassing. At the Orange Bowl, which had never happened at the Orange Bowl at that time, and in the playoffs, something's got to give. What gave was David Woodley and the gift-giving Dolphin attack. Four to the left, Harris to the right, the backs are split at the 44-yard line. Woodley is back to throw, set, look, dumps it over the middle, in the air, intercepted. Picked off at the 45, at the 40, 35, 30, at the 25, the 20. Edwards is down and out of bounds at the Miami 11-yard line. What an opportunistic move by Pine Edwards. John Woodcock got in Woodley's face real quick on a stunt. He looped from his right end spot all the way around and came into the lane between the right and left tackles offensively and shook up Woodley, rushed him. And San Diego has literally exploded against the Miami Dolphins. Third down and seven at the Miami eight-yard line. Brooks the lone setback. Chandler in motion. Bounces back. Dumps it to Brooks. He's at the 10. He's at the 5. He's going. Hey, James, right to the and Brooks just gripped it right, Fouts hit him in the backfield, a little flat pass, and James outraced everybody and put it in the end zone for the score. If ever the old nail in the coffin cliche applied, James Brooks' touchdown seemed to be it. San Diego's complete domination of Miami had apparently put the game out of reach. Luther puts it down, but Erska hits it up, it's good. The Chargers 24, the Dolphins nothing. You don't come to Miami and do this to a Don Shula team. We were concerned. There was there was a little bit of panic on the side. Like Nobody wants to get blown out in a playoff game. It was comical. Uh, it was so easy for us to score and, and so difficult for them to even hang on to the ball. 
but then the clock was still the clock and it still had three quarters to go so we knew that uh, uh, regardless of how many points we had it, it probably wasn't going to be enough. Even when you're out front by that much, crazy things can happen. At first you're depressed, but then you say, well, wait a minute, there's a lot of time left. All we've got to do is stop them, you know, chip away at the lead, get back in the ball game. We got to get on the sideline. I said, guys, we got some pride. We got a lot of pride. And we don't want to go down like this. Not many teams come back from 24 to zip, and you thought it was going to be one of those days where, you know, just uh, nothing seemed to go uh, right for us. Franklin and Nathan are the back set behind Woodley at his own 43. Woodley rolling to his left at the 35. Cox's arm gets hit. The ball is on the turf. Scramble for it. I believe Miami recovers the fumble. Boy, Woodley was hit as he tried to get away, but it's going to belong to Miami. Not only are the Dolphins lucky to have the ball, Woodley's lucky to have his right arm and shoulder. It'll be second down, a loss of eight, second and 18. The Dolphins still have it as we've run out of time here in the first period. So the score at the end of the first period here at the Orange Bowl in Miami, the Chargers playing better than they've ever looked in a playoff game, 24, and the Miami Dolphins, nothing. When we return, the arrival of a hero. He gave them a, a surge of uh, adrenaline and they started doing the things that they were supposed to, they were capable of doing. Welcome back to the NFL's greatest games. The second quarter began with Don Shula's Dolphins behind by the seemingly insurmountable score of 24 to nothing. Shula is saying don't panic. The Charger coaches are telling the players don't get complacent. Don't let down. 24 points ain't a lot in a playoff game. Woodley at his own 35. Second down and 18. Chargers lead 24 nothing as we start the second period. Woodley back to throw. Sets comes right over the middle. Incomplete. Into and out of the hands of Vigorito, who just did not hang on. And the Dolphins have not been able to move the football. They've got third in about a week and a half right now. Back to throw is Woodley. Sets going to get right. Going to get hit. Gets away. Falls down. Sacked. Dropped in there is in on top of him was Gary Big Hands Johnson with a big assist to Leroy Jones. Here, Don Shula made a crucial decision, bringing Don Strock off the bench to replace the tormented David Woodley. First and ten, and Don Strock, the eight-year veteran out of Virginia Tech, has come on to run the ball club now. Woodley was in the ball game, attempted four, completed two, was intercepted. He's on the sidelines, and Strock is in the game. When you have a Don Strock in the bullpen, uh, you go to him, and I think Coach Shula, probably over history, uh, has stuck with his uh, starter a little bit too long. I think the timing was absolutely perfect. Uh, you know, uh, that's one of the things you have to give uh, Coach Shula a lot of credit for is that uh, uh, he, he usually did a pretty good job of handling his personnel. He came in and all he had to do was to, to throw the ball. He didn't have to worry about anything else and that's what Strzok loved to do. He just loved to throw the ball down the field. I don't think we were quite prepared for Don Strzok. He came in and he did an outstanding job and he kind of caught off, off, off balance there. When they took David Woodley out, uh, we realized he'd been ineffective and we knew that Strzok was a very patient, very seasoned backup and had great skills, but we had no idea he could rally his team the way he did. Strzok, the quarterback, takes the snap, play action, fake, fires it over the middle and it's complete up to the 35-36 yard line to Harris, brought down by Mike Williams, and he opens up with a 17-yarder first and 10. The backs are split. Strzok at his own 38-yard line. Back to throw, second and eight. Sets runs right over the middle, wide open. Nathan at the 45 to the Charger. 40 still on his feet. King pulls him down at the 35-yard line. And Strzok hit him with a pinpoint pass. So Tony Nathan with the big gainer carries it down to the Charger, 35. And it'll be first and ten for the Dolphins, their best offensive display of the afternoon. Get down, Strzok! Let's get him in there, Don! Come on, Don! Let's get him in there, Don! Let's go now. Let's have another one like that. Everything changed. The rhythm, the tempo, uh, the philosophy. Don Strzok was, uh, for a long time, as good a reliever as there was in the game. Don Strzok was the, was the man, you know. Don Strzok can bring us back. 
He gave them a, a surge of uh, adrenaline and they started doing the things that they were supposed, they were capable of doing. Everybody in the passing game start to pick it up a step. Big play time now, third and 10 for both teams. Strzok the quarterback at the Charger 35 yard line. Back to throw. Strzok sets, steps up, throws it way downfield and it is caught. They say at the sideline, the Chargers say the man was out of bounds. Caught it against Mike Williams. Jimmy Cephalo caught it. Oh, I'd like to see that again. Well, what they're going to say is Cephalo was in the air when he caught it and went out of bounds on the momentum caused by Mike Williams, who hit him, and so that makes it a good catch. He loosened our defense up, and he went to a lot of sideline patterns and short patterns, and instead of going for the big play, he just systematically ate us up, dissected us. The ball is at the Chargers 17-yard line, 24-0 Chargers lead. The backs are split. Figueredo in with Nathan, back to throw as Strzok steps up, gets hit, and he still throws it downfield, and it's in it. Oh, my. Pete Shaw had it and dropped it at the goal line. Shaw had it and dropped it for an interception at the goal line. The Dolphins had been handed a reprieve that set up their first points of the game. Ball is at the 25. It'll be a 35-yard try. Von Schumann hits it, and it is good. The score, San Diego 24, Miami 3. We'll be back after this. Coming up, Miami slowly closes the gap. And now, back to the NFL's greatest games. Come on, stop. Hit the quarterback. Their shutout gone. The question for San Diego became, how would they respond? Could Dan Fouts and friends match Miami's score with one of their own? The answer from the Killer Bees was an emphatic no. First and 10, San Diego, the ball on the Charger 47-yard line. Fouts play action fake, rolling to throw, going long downfield. He's got Chandler. Chandler can't get it. Jump ball time at the 10, and Walker was there with Chandler, and up they went incomplete. Let's go, defense! defense! Chargers have the ball, second and 10. Bounces back to throw with time, goes to throw it. The ball on the ground. I don't know whether they're going to call it a forward pass or not. Bumble, bumble. They're calling it a fumble. They're giving the ball to the Dolphins. And they are playing like it's a 0 0 tie. They are playing some super tenacious defense. Strike the quarterback, straight back to throw, set, comes right over the middle with it, downfield, it is complete at the 19-yard line, caught by Harris, first down Miami. Well, Strzok is doing an outstanding job reading what the Chargers are doing coverage-wise. That time again, he went up over the backers who are working the outside area, underneath the deep part of the secondary, as Shaw and Edwards were back deep, and they ran that slant. And they caught it again. The Chargers are going to have to do some adjusting on defense, which they're not doing now that Strzok is in a quarterback. And obviously the Dolphins have believed Coach Shula that there's plenty of time to get back in this thing because they are playing really the best football that's being played in the field right now. At the Charger 14, Strzok to throw, fires it out on the flat, complete at the 10, and going out of bounds with the ball at the 8-yard line was Rose, the tight end, and that'll be... Well, uh, they're going to mark it. I think he reached close. out and got the first down well, with the football. He might have. He might have. He did a fine job. As soon as Willie Buchanan got there, he just stretched out as long as he could, and he was able to get the football over the first down marker. So now it's going to be first and goal That's inside the, the nine. Line. Yep. The Chargers lead 24 to 3, but Strzok is picking the Chargers secondary apart like you'd pluck over the bones of an old turkey. First down and goal at the eight-yard line. Strzok, play action, cocks his arm, throws it out, complete to Nathan at the five. Knocked out of bounds by Mike Williams at the four. Come on, defense, let's win it! San Diego defense has been abused on this drive. See if they can rise up now and throw him back. Strzok, the quarterback. Steps up, throws it in the end zone, it's complete. Caught by Rose, the tight end. That was just a great play by Strzok. The Chargers had him wrapped up, and I have not seen many quarterbacks in this league throw that accurately and with that much poise under that kind of pressure. I think what Don Strzok did was he brought that gunslinger mentality, that swagger to the Dolphins. 
and especially after they scored, they started to believe that they could do it. I wasn't even a, a primary receiver. I mean, I was like the third option in that thing coming from the backside late. And the guy covering me collided and allowed me to sprint over and, and get wide open. I felt after we drove down the field and scored that, hey, this game's a long way from over. Got a half left. Let's just make it respectable. Try to get it to within 14 before the half. Hey, we'll be okay in the second half. That 24 nothing is now history instead of news. So the line is set. The snap, it's down. Von Schaumann hits it. It's up and it's good. And with 2.46 remaining in the first half, the Dolphins have come roaring back. The score at the Orange Bowl in Miami. Chargers 24, Dolphins 10. That's right. I knew it all along. Never give up on Miami. When we return, the incredible hook and lateral. Welcome back to the NFL's Greatest Games. Oh. With two and a half minutes remaining, the Dolphin defense braced for another assault. It was essential for them to keep the Chargers off the scoreboard before the end of the first half. This could be a key possession for the Chargers, Tom, with two and a half to go in the first half. Dolphins make a big play or get a turnover here, and the whole tone of this ball game could change. Indeed, the pendulum swung back to the Chargers on the power running of Chuck Muncie and the passing partnership of Dan Fouts and Kellen Winslow. But eventually, the drive stalled, and San Diego was forced to attempt a 55-yard field goal. Well, Rolf's going to try a long one. Fuck that kick! Come on, let's go! This one's going to be 55. If he hits it, it'll be the longest of his career. Luther puts it down. Rolf hits it. It is going to be no good. But Just it's wide. Long. Wide to the right. It was well hit. 30 seconds remain in the half. That's time for the Dolphins to do something, and Strzok has had two very good drives. The Charger D has got to tighten How up here. How about throwing an interception? Pecking away with short, safe tosses and screens, Miami drove downfield against the Chargers and the clock. Then, with just six seconds left, they pulled off one of the most dramatic plays in postseason history. The ball is on the Charger. 46 seconds remain on the halftime clock. 24-10 Chargers. He's straight back to throw. Gets a rush. Steps up. Throws it downfield. It is complete. The lateral back at the 20, the 10, the 5. Into the end zone. Touchdown. Oh, they did it with a gadget. They did it with a gadget. one of those gadgets you get away with if you can execute it, and they did. Almost everybody has it, but nobody ever uses it. So when you do use it, you might use it every five years. It never worked. It never worked in practice. Everybody's seen it. It's something you do since you're a little kid. It's a play that you, you hope works for you, and it's a desperation play. There's no question about that. It was perfect timing. And hey, it's not, there's nothing against our defense. I mean, I think we were playing pretty good defense at that time, but they called the perfect play at the perfect time. It was perfect time. And that was stunning. I mean, that was, that was, shouldn't happen to a professional team. You know, you shouldn't know your responsibilities and, and recognize it, but uh, it just came out of the blue. It was a heck of a play. Yeah, the odds against that happening, ah. A million to one, two million to one. But uh, Shula, he came up with a, a master a masterpiece with that uh, hook and lateral. The first part of it's not the hard part, the, the, the hook you know, for a guy to catch the curl. Strzok made an impeccable throw. The timing was just, just right. We hit the hook. They figured that they were going to come in and tackle him, uh, keep him in bounds, let the clock continue to run, and they all converged on him. I was a man responsible for of keeping everybody in front of me. Tony Nathan did a good job of sneaking through the line and then coming unnoticed uh, to catch the lateral and go up the sideline. You know, Tony wasn't the fastest guy on our team, and to watch him going down the side, that might have been as ex excited as I've ever been during a game. All of a sudden, the crowd that had been pretty silent erupted. I mean, it was so loud, 
You couldn't hear somebody two feet away unless you screamed at them, and even then it was different. Drive for the extra point, there's no time left. The snap is down, the kick is up, the kick is good. That's the end of the first half, and here in Miami's Orange Bowl, Miami has pulled them within seven. Chargers 24, Miami 17. When we went in at halftime, you know, our whole team felt like this is our ball game. You know, we're right where we want to be. You know, we might not be leading, but we're right where we want to be. As we were going in and they walked off the field, I said to myself, we're going to win this game. First of all, we saw how tired they were as those guys were all coming off the field to let that happen. And we felt like mentally and physically that they were done. I remember saying to myself that I was not going to be a part of a team that was up 24 to nothing and lost. And especially being the last game of the season, you live with that for the rest of the year. We walked into the locker room and uh, you, would, you would have thought that we, uh, we were ahead by 20 points. We were so pumped up. Our players were pumped up. And I didn't want to do anything to you know, take away from that. So I didn't say much at halftime. We, we couldn't wait to play the second half. When we return, the second half kickoff. And now, back to the NFL's greatest games. We came out, I believe we had the ball to start the, the second half. Well, the first time we had it, if we didn't, it was just like, there's no question, we're going down and score. They can't do anything to stop us. With restored confidence, Miami took the field, seeking to eliminate the costly errors which plagued them in the first half. Ross Benerskis to kick it, to call it, here's Tom Kelly. And the ball is in the air. Downfield is taken by Vigarito at the 6, to the 10, the 15, the 20. He's hit and dropped as he crosses the 25, rolling to the 26. Cliff Thrift was down there to hit him. Struck the quarterback, of course, has the back split. That would be Hill along with Nathan. Takes the snap, gives the ball to Franklin. Kelcher grabs him as he gets to the 27 and pulls him down a gain of one, second and nine. And it's funny how the crowd's attitude changes in such a short period of time. Strock, a long count at the line of scrimmage, back to throw, stop, nice protection over the middle, incomplete. Pass intended, a flag comes down for Hardy, the tight end, and they're going to call a pass interference now. Well, they haven't called it interference, they've called it defensive holding. That makes it an automatic first down, though, first and ten at the 32. Strock, who's having a field day, straight back to throw, comes down this side, the pass is... the completion. Big play to the Charger, 39, first and 10, Miami. And a great catch by Duriel Harris as the ball came through. Glenn Edwards was right there on top of him. They were over on the sideline. Strzok throwing it over and into the double coverage. And I'll tell you, Harris made a great catch of the ball. 24-17, Dolphins trying to get even. And the Chargers trying to find some way to glue their defense together. First down at the Chargers, 39-yard line. Strzok the quarterback, gives the ball to Franklin, trying the right side, and he is dropped uh, by King, and coming up also Pete Shaw. Laslevic is there to make the stop in Kelcher. They'll mark progress to the 38, second and nine. Harris to the right and Moore to the left. Strzok straight back to throw, has time, dumps it over the middle, it is complete. At the 35, drops there in his tracks on defense, Woody Lowe, and the pass is complete to Hill. A gain of three, it'll be third down and six at the San Diego 35-yard line. Third down at the Charger 35. Strzok is back to throw. Has time, comes downfield, it is caught complete at the 17-yard line with the pass was Harris. First down, Miami. So this drive that started on the Dolphin 26 has moved to the Charger 16 where it's first down. Nathan straight ahead, he's hit by Laslovic. Inside the 15 to the 14 yard line, second and eight after a gain of two. Chargers lead 24 to 17, but you get the feeling it's a momentary thing as Miami, after a 24 nothing deficit, has come back to completely dominate this football game. Back to throw, steps up, fires to the sidelines, and is incomplete, into and out of the hands of Harris. Coverage by Edwards, at the 10, incomplete. I don't know what the Miami offensive line of Giesler, Kuchenberg, Denard, Newman, and Laxo suddenly decided to do. 
that they weren't doing for Woodley, but Strzok has been an untouchable. Back to throw is Strzok on third down, fires downfield, complete in the end zone, low touchdown. Uh, he called a play, and it was like, Don, he said, you're going to be wide open on this play. You're going to be able to beat this guy inside, and he'll be able to, should be wide open for this touchdown. Seems automatic. Line is set. The snap. It's down. He hits it. It's up. It's good. So we've got 10.50 to go in the third period, and the game is tied. The place was just was nuts, man. It was our game. The emotion, the, their attempt to come back, that was playing on your whole inner being. And, and we had enough veteran players on the team so that in a situation like that, that we knew and I knew that we could hang together and uh, at least get a chance to win the game. After both teams punted on their next possession, the Chargers got the ball in good field position and looked to retake the lead. Wide to the left is Chandler, Joyner left, Winslow left, scales to the right, back to throw is Faust. Fires it downfield, it's complete at the 35, scales to the 31. The defensive back, Small, fell down, and Blackwood made the stop. It is the first down, Chargers on the Miami 31-yard line. Chargers with the first and 10 were tied at 24. Five minutes to go, third period. San Diego has seen a 24-point lead fall away. Faust takes the snap, play action, throws to the sideline to Chandler at the 30, at the 25, and down he goes. Good reaction over on defense for the um, Miami Dolphins. Good mix of plays right now by Larry Weaver, the offensive coordinator. The Chargers are mixing up the middle, the outside, the middle, the outside. That's really the key element of the Charger offensive design. Faust to throw, has protection in time, over the middle, he's got his win, man, wins low touchdown, hit him at the five, Faust given the opportunity and protection to throw, put it in the end zone, and Winslow, I think, ran right into the fence. <laughs> ran into the end one. John Capilletti did a great job of picking up a safety on a blitz. He was supposed to go out in the pattern, Well, the guy he was supposed to draw away from Winslow blitzed. So he picked him up, made a great block, and that left Winslow one-on-one. -on -one. The quarterback pumps the ball, the linebacker breaks on it to try to jump in front of it. You then have to be an athlete to turn up field, and the quarterback delivers the ball on the line. Chargers have gone back on top, 30 to 24. Line is set, the snap, it's down, but Ershka puts it up, it's good. Time out on the field, and the crowd somewhat subdued. We've got 4.15 remaining in the third period as the Chargers go back on top. San Diego 31 and Miami 24. Coming up, the Dolphins finally take command. Welcome back to the NFL's greatest games. With the San Diego offense regaining the lead midway through the third period, it was now up to the Charger defense to find a way to stop Don Strzok. The kickoff, a flag is down, taken by Vigorito at the 10. Vigorito is hit and knocked down and out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. Gregor was down very quickly. No flag on the play. They picked it up. And the coverage was down there, and Gregor hit Vigorito just about in his tracks where he caught the football. Moore to the right, Harris to the left. The backs are split. That'd be Franklin along with Nathan. Strzok the quarterback. Straight back to throw. Dumps it off on the left side to Nathan. Back of the line. Laslovic comes over to influence them, throw him out of bounds. The flag is down on the Dolphin 23, and they may have caught number 67, Kuchenberg, for holding. The ball is going back inside the 15, first and 15 at the 13-yard line. Strzok has the back split, back to throw, dumps it off again to Nathan, back of the line at the 10, breaks the tackle, gets to the 15, 17-yard line, and down he goes. Chargers need a big defensive stand, but more than anything, they've got to restore some thought of normalcy to this Miami ball club. Second and 10, the ball nosed up to the Dolphin 18. Strzok has the back, dumps it off again to Nathan, back of the line at the 10. He's hit, spins, tries to get away, does his hit again, fights his way for the first down to the 27-yard line. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven 
Chargers hit him before they brought him down. Four to the first down, but what an effort by Nathan. I mean, what a gutty play. Third down and inches. Snap. The give. I don't know if he, he made a big pile He up. may not. But it's all, it all depends on who puts their foot down where. Right foot or left foot? Let's see if they put it by the right foot or the left foot. 2.42, time remaining, third period. First and 10, Miami at the 27. Struck the quarterback, back to throw, looking left, fires it down, it is. It hit Pete Shaw in the numbers, in the back of his jersey, it That's hit Pete best. Shaw. But it hit him in the numbers in the front of his jersey, it intercepted him. Second and 10, Dolphins at their own 27-yard line. Cephalo right this time. Strzok is back to throw, coming down the left side. It is caught by Cephalo, and he's down and out of midfield, tackled by Shaw. Caught it right inside Willie Buchanan. First down, Dolphins at midfield now, and the Charger defense could have to suck it up again. Harris right, Cephalo to the left. Franklin and Nathan behind Strzok, who's back to throw. Steps up, goes right down the middle, got a man. 15-10, touchdown. The tight end, Hardy. I released outside, and, and uh, Woody Lowe was, uh, was the outside linebacker. I, I tried to lean on him a little bit and get a little bit of separation, because he was, he was quite a bit faster than me. And then uh, looking up, and the ball was there. It was man-to-man -man coverage. We knew the middle of the field would be open. All I had to do was, you know, look to safeties, keep them wide, and then throw the ball to Bruce down through the middle. I just kept running and running, and, and uh, I was wondering if the end zone was ever going to get there. They made a great play, and I was able to make the tackle and line up and play again, but I tell you, no defensive player likes to get beat. On their next drive, the San Diego offense finally showed signs of cracking. The Dolphins would then get their biggest break of the game. So it's going to be third and ten, San Diego at the Chargers 17-yard line. Miami and San Diego in a shootout. Bouts to throw. Over the middle, downfield, it is intercepted at the 45. Back to the 40. Still on his feet, laterals back. With it, it's small, he's at the 30, the 25, down to the 15, down at the 14-yard line. With it is small. Charlie Joyner fell down. It was a post drop to Joyner. Joyner underneath the safety, and he fell down, but by then the ball had been thrown. It was just the second San Diego turnover of the day. But in terms of momentum, Glenn Blackwood's interception and Gerald Small's lateral return tilted the scale completely toward the Miami side of the field. Carefully, the Dolphins placed themselves in position to finally take the lead and assume command of the game as the final seconds of the third period ticked away. When we return, surviving the Miami Heat. You can't become accustomed to that type of humidity and that type of heat in such a short period of time as we did. And now, back to the NFL's greatest games. They were getting up slower and slower, and, and I think some of the blows we were giving them were starting to take their toll. Uh, you know, it was a physical football game, and uh, I think, you know, after a while, your body uh, starts saying, uh, time out. To start the fourth quarter, Miami wasted little time taking their first lead of the game against the tiring Charger defense. underway, tied at 31. May not be for long. The ball is at the Charger 12. It is second and seven Miami. The handoff is to Nathan. Sweeps to the right. He's at the 15, the 10, at the 5. Touchdown, Miami. For the first time in this ball game, Miami has gone on top. Your defense never laid a hand on Tony Nathan. Two great runs in this game for Tony Nathan, no question about it. The Chargers had given up 38 points in less than two quarters. 
and were now fighting the heat and humidity, as well as the resurgent dolphins. It's the fine line between the good and the great, um, the dead and the living. That heat would take us to the edge of our stamina, to the edge of our breaking point. But in so doing, it took the opponents beyond theirs. You can't become accustomed to that type of humidity and that type of heat in such a short period of time as we did. And uh, it was exhausting. I mean, it was very, very exhausting. And uh, I was drenched. I mean, I may have lost nine, maybe 10 pounds. You could just feel yourself, you know, minute by minute, getting more and more totally spent. But you had to push on. You had to push on. As the game wore along, and as the humidity really began to take its toll, you could see the impact on players, uh, particularly close to the line of scrimmage, the, the offensive, defensive linemen who were heavily padded and were just sweating so profusely. And then, of course, Kellen was probably the most visible guy who was quite literally carried off the field several times, just worn out, exhausted. It wasn't until, I guess, the latter part of the third quarter is when I really hit the wall as far as the hydration was concerned and the cramps became an issue. It really got bad in the uh, latter part of the fourth quarter when my back started to cramp up. And when your back cramps up, nothing works. Despite their exhaustion, the Charger offense continued to move full throttle down the field as they had for most of the day. But fueled by the success of their offense, the Killer Bees held their ground. And the Chargers were left looking for answers after giving the ball back with 11 minutes to play. It was then that Miami's vaunted ball control finally became a factor. Shelled for most of the game as the Dolphins played from behind, the ground game began to grind the ball downfield as time became a factor. Miami now using up the clock. First down, Miami. It was first downs. Let's get first downs. Let's just control the football. Uh, go down if need be. We'll kick a field goal. We'll be up by 10, and that'll be it. We thought they were dead. I mean, we're just waiting, like, throw in the towel. Come on. You're tired. It's hot. Throw in the towel. Let us win this game. Dumps it over the middle, it is complete. Down to the San Diego 36-yard line, Hardy again. I don't think Strzok's throwing a pass out of the strike zone tonight. Miami now with easily within field goal range. I knew we'd get another chance at it. If we can keep them from scoring, we had a chance to win the football game. We were just trying to stop the ball. We were reaching for the ball, grabbing for the ball. The first per person would come to the guy and tackle him, and the second person that would come in would try to strip the ball. That was our whole game plan. First down at the Charger 24. Miami with a monumental drive. What a great exhibition on, of eating up the clock. Strzok is put on here. Strzok hands off to the first man, and Gary Big Hands down. The ball's on the ground. Chargers have recovered. San Diego's got the football at the 18-yard line. The fullback, Franklin, had it knocked loose. And the Chargers recover at the 18-yard line. I remember Louis Kelcher sliding over and getting a hand on the football and just ripping it out. And that baby just spun to the ground. And it was like, it's magic! <laughs> now that was a big play. That gave the Chargers that hope of, uh, again, winning the football game. Coming up, the Chargers' last chance. I was just playing. You know, I wasn't thinking about whether the guy was tired or not. I wasn't thinking whether, whether or not the defense was tired or whether we were tired. I just think about making sure we score. Welcome back to the NFL's greatest games. I tell you, I was very pleasantly surprised when we got the ball back. There was nothing that had to be said. We're on the 18-yard line. We got, uh, you know, 82 yards to go. Let's, this is what we're going to do. Ready, break. Let's go. Boom. Bout has four minutes and 39 seconds. And one of the tough defenses to throw again. And he's got to go. 
82 yards just to get a tie. Foul. Back to throw. Falls down. Gets up. Steps out of the pocket. Throws downfield. Joiner at the 25. Joiner at the 30. And fell at the 32 or could have picked up some more valuable yardage. Fouch is as tough as a dollar steak. That was Dan. He would not let us lose in that game. And hit with a joiner for a first down at the 32. Wide to the right is Chandler. Wide to the left is Joiner. Back to throw Fouch. Quick out to Chandler. Chandler coming to the side is uh, out of bounds at the 37-yard line. Chandler stopped the clock when he stepped out of bounds. It's second down and four at the 38-yard line. The winner plays either Buffalo or Cincinnati. Masick snaps the give to Muncie on the sweep. Muncie is at the 40, trying to get the first down. Can't stop just short of the 40-yard line. Muncie got a real late hit from Blackwood, and Muncie looked up at him, and now the referee is saying, now, Chuck, boys will be boys. At the 40, it'll be third down and two chargers with 3.25 in the clock running. In motion, Joyner. About to throw. Fires it over the middle. Joyner has it for the first down at the 45-yard line, and Blackwood nailed him. First and 10 at the 45. Miami with a five-man rush. Fouts has time. Throws downfield. It's caught by Joyner, who was pulled out of bounds at the 39-yard line. The Chargers are screaming for a face pass, but they aren't going to get it. I was just playing. You know, I wasn't thinking about whether the guy was tired or not. I wasn't thinking whether or not the defense was tired or whether we were tired. I just think about making sure we score. Chargers started on their own 18. They trail 38-31. High formation at the 40. Faust gives to Muncie straight ahead. He's to the 35-yard line. A pickup of five, second and five. Kozlowski makes the stop. 2-0-3, 2-0-2, and that's it. The two-minute warning here in the fourth period. Second and five when play resumed. I remember that seeing the, the faces of the Dolphin pass rushers trying to get to me and and the frustration after the ball was gone and they still still weren't any closer than three or four feet 38 to 31 in favor of the Miami Dolphins Bouts has two touchdown tosses 270 yards second and five San Diego back to pass fires it batted away at the line of scrimmage boy he had Winslow open at the 32 Drive started on the San Diego 18. Bounce back to throw. Steps up, throws it over the middle. Complete Winslow inside the 30 at the 28. First down, tackle made by Kozlowski along with Blackwood. Chargers first and 10 at the Miami 28. A minute 31 remaining in this game. San Diego needs a touchdown to tie. Capoletti and Chandler wide to the left. Bounce to throw. Steps up, throws downfield. It is complete. Caught at the 10-yard line inside to the 9 by Chandler. They'll have to stop it now. The clock, that is, with a minute 7 to go. Tackle made by Walker. First and goal. The ball is at the 9-yard line. The snap. Bounce back to throw. Looking. Cocks his arm. Stop. Throws it toward the end zone. Touchdown, San Diego. Catching it was James Brooks. I was going to win, so he was the primary on the play. And I thought that if I put the ball up in the corner of the end zone, that being Superman as he was that night, that he could, you know, put on his cape and fly out there and catch it. And uh, I don't know where James Brooks came from. We'd run that play a thousand times. Never once did he or that position ever have a ball thrown to him, let alone catch it. Uh, so for him to run the baseline of the end zone was about as smart a play as I've ever seen a guy make. Line is set, the snap, it's down, but Erska puts it up, it's good. With 58 seconds remaining. Our coaches decided, because there was a wind blowing at us, that we should squib the kick, and we didn't, it backfired. Taken there by Hill, and Eddie Hill brings it to the Miami 40. Pretty good field position, Miami first and second. I, as a quarterback, uh, I would pray for a squib. Eh? You know? Squib it to us, please. Give us field position immediately. I may have been making 
those thoughts known on the sidelines at the time. Why the heck are we squib kicking? What a game it's been. What a game it has been. Strock is back to throw. Looking, looking, throws it upfield. It is almost intercepted. A diving try by Glenn Edwards, and he couldn't hang on. Edwards can't believe that he didn't come up with that football. Second and 10 at the Miami 40. 46 seconds remain. Back to throw Strock. Strock steps up, throws it right down the middle. It's intercepted and then dropped and rolling on the turf. They're going to call it Miami's ball. They're going to call it Miami's ball. It was intercepted by Buchanan who couldn't hang on. And Miami will have a first down in the San Diego 49. Strock with four touchdown passes. Takes the snap. He's back to throw. He gets rushed. He throws it over the middle. Complete. Down to the 30. With the ball at the 31-yard line is Nathan. First down, Miami. And I would imagine that Yui Von Schaumann can't miss from that distance. See now with his Strzok. Just tries to run it into perfect position for him. Strzok takes the ball straight ahead. Figueredo drives it to the 26-yard line. They're going to let the clock run down to where there's nothing left, and Von Schaman will come on to try to win it. Weeks before, I was placed on what they called the do-or-die team, the emergency team. And it didn't matter if you were a starter. It didn't matter if you were, you know, at the highest contract on the team. When the game was on the line, I was the jumper. Four seconds remain. He has made 17 of the last 19, so it's going to be about a 42-yard try. And the football season comes down to this. The snap high, it's down, he kicks it. It is short, it is short, it is short. They're going to overtime. The Chargers might have got a partial block on it. <laughs> right here, no more than this. When Von Schaumann's kick fell harmlessly to the Orange Bowl turf, the two teams wearily trudged into overtime with the score tied at 38. When we return, the triumphant performance of Kellen Winslow. Today's player, they say you're in the zone. That's the way they, they describe it. But at that time, I think Kellen was playing outside of himself and then everything clicked. And now, back to the NFL's greatest games. Every time I think about that game, I think about Kellen Winslow and what a fantastic day that he had. Uh, we tried everything, and he, he just was uh, marvelous. In what would become a Hall of Fame career, this would be Winslow's defining performance. 13 catches for 166 yards against a Miami defense designed to stop him. Today's player, they say you're in the zone. That's the way they, they describe it. But at that time, I think Kellen was playing outside of himself and that everything clicked. Even at this elevated playing level, Winslow paid a painful price for his great performance. He was so tired that he possibly couldn't get up by himself. We'd help him up and then he'd come back in and make another great play against us. So uh, when they came over to the sideline, I said, let him get up by himself, please. Despite fighting injuries to both shoulders and suffering from dehydration, Winslow's blocking and pass catching led the Chargers down the field in the opening drive of overtime. After moving at will all day, San Diego finally began to see victory taking shape. Fires downfield complete to the 40, to the 42 yard line, the old pro Charlie Joyner. Gives to Brooks, straight ahead to the 20, to the 15, still running. Brooks is at the 10. Brooks is inside to about the 8-yard line. Of course, as a kicker, you're thinking, this is where generally games are decided by a kick. And so you're ready. And sure enough, we march down the field, and we have an opportunity. 
And so, like Von Schaman, minutes before, Rolf Banerska has an opportunity to kick the San Diego Chargers into the AFC Championship game. It's a 27-yarder. The snap, it's down, he hits it, it's up! It's no good! And now I'm devastated. I'm walking off the field going, I've just let my team down. A team that has fought so hard, laid their guts out there, and I've just missed the kick. We lost this game. Overtime, you know, anything can happen. After more than 65 grueling minutes, both teams seem spent. And while each sideline searched for precious energy reserves, neither could muster enough strength to sustain a drive. With their bodies now starting to fail, each player crossed thresholds of endurance which had previously been untested. I saw a lot of players on our team starting to drag a little bit, uh, but, you know, again, they would go out and do their job. For those four or five seconds that a play would last, everybody was going at 100%. And uh, afterwards, it was just like back to slow motion just to gather yourself so you can go again on the next play. With just over six minutes remaining in overtime, Miami got good field position and began to move the football. Crock at the 46-yard line has the back split. Back to throw, looking, looking, looking. Chase throws it downfield, it is complete. Down to the Charger 25-yard line, Jimmy Cephalo. Miami positioning the ball now for a field goal try to be sure. Nathan straight ahead, gets some pretty good yardage down to the 20. Try, back to split. Long count, gives the ball to Nathan straight ahead. Nathan with the ball. At the 18-yard line, pulled down. Dewey Von Schaman comes on the field. The ball will be marked down at the 25, a 35-yard try. Struck to hold, waiting for the ball. The snap is down, he hits it. It is blocked again. The Chargers block it. Looking for the ball, San Diego has it at the 16-yard line. The Chargers have blocked it again. And I want to set the record straight. I did not block the second one. Leroy Jones, number 68, who is six foot eight, got penetration and got the second field goal. You can remember the sound of our kicker kicking six inches behind the ball. <laughs> And I, you know, I'm standing there going, man, we finally got this game won. And I can remember the sound. It's almost like a golf shot when you hit it fat. That's exactly what it sounded like. Coming up, the thrilling conclusion. Again, I was second or third down. They called for field goal. And I'm thinking, wow, Coach Coriel has a lot of confidence in me. I'm not, I'm not letting him down. You know, you get that feeling, you know, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's like a gambler who's thrown by two sevens. He's got, you know, he thinks he's lucky, 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 you know. And, and I kind of had that feeling that we have a chance to win it again. I really did. First and 10 on their own 16 yard line. Faust has the back split. Faust backpedaling to throw. Looking, dumps it off. Brooks at the 15. Brooks back in the middle to the 20 to the 23-yard line. First and 10. Winslow coming in motion to the right side. Bounce back to throw. Fires it down. It is complete to Chandler. He's out of bounds at the 31-yard line. First down. Crowd roars for the Dolphins. Joiner left as Bounce is back to throw. Looking, throws down the middle, it is caught by Chandler at midfield. Great catch by Chandler, and a big hit by Lyle Blackwood. First and 10, San Diego at midfield, and Chandler is down flat on his numbers. Bounce with a first down at midfield, it's about to throw. Cocks his arm, pumps, looks, looks, looks. Looking, throws downfield, he's got Joyner at 
the 10. Gunners at the 15 yard line. Charlie is down to the 10 yard line. First down, San Diego. Faust looked and looked and pumped and moved and faked and spotted the old veteran and flipped it to him and he got to the 10 yard line for a first down. Easily with his field goal range. After he, after he hooked the chip shot, was there any doubt? Absolutely. You know, after Von Chauman chunked his and Kellen made the block, absolutely. This is not a normal football game. With second or third down, they called for field goal. And I'm thinking, wow, Coach Coriel has a lot of confidence in me. I'm not, I'm not letting him down. From the 19-yard line, a 29-yard field goal try to win it. The snap. It is down. It is up. It is good. And as it went through, I remember there was absolute silence. And I, I turned to Ed Luther. I go, didn't it go through? Didn't we win? And then I could see the bench behind him going nuts. You know, I'm a male. I, I don't know how it is to give birth to anything like that. You go and you hug a guy, and there are some guys, and you, you don't see a blink. You see a stare, you know? <laughs> you see a deep stare. That's what I remember. I remember Kellen being completely exhausted, where he had to be carried off the field. My back cramps up. My legs cramp up. My calves cramp up. My shoulders are cramping. My stomach is cramping. For some reason, I wanted to walk off the field without help, because I came on the field the same way. But my back kept cramping up, and then it's the shot of, um, that you see a lot on ESPN. My biggest mistake in that game was not helping Kellen off the field. <laughs> there you are. You got Eric Sievers, Billy Shields, Kellen in the middle. It's the shot you see all the time. And it could have been me. You know? I tell my friends, that's the biggest mistake of my career. I always get a little bit frustrated when everybody says, oh, what, a, what an effort when they were carrying him off the field. And I thought, you know, guy weighed 50 pounds more than me. I was hitting him most of the time. He should have been carrying me off the field. Never once. Did anybody ever help me off the field? I got my butt off the field under my own power with a broken back, broken ankles, it, you name it. I've had it all. But you get off the field. Be a man. For Miami, it was a defeat which seemed impossible. Three times they had victory in hand. But it was the Chargers who were moving on. It was like the, uh, you know, all the air went out of the balloon. When that, when that ball went through the uprights. As a player, you go back and you replay the whole game. And you say, what could I have done different? You know, when you get beat by a bundle, it doesn't matter. But when you lose a game the way we lost, and I think that's why that room was so quiet. The stadium was almost empty, except way up high uh, was a group of people in yellow Charger Power t-shirts. And it must have been, you know, maybe 500, 600, but they were still in the stands. And, and uh, I had a long run to go, or at this point, it was a long walk to the locker room. And, and they were up there, and I remember looking up at them, and they were still cheering and having a good time of carrying on. For San Diego, the ecstasy of winning was dulled only slightly by the pain of complete exhaustion. You would think it would just be nuts, and, and you know, guys would jump around screaming, yelling, having fun. We were pumped up, but, but, but I tell you, it's very, very much more low-key than other locker rooms I'd been in. It was, it was more of a, thank God that's over. Thank God we got out alive. I could honestly say that I was as tired as I've ever been. It was probably as long as I've ever played in one game. For one charger, the emotional victory represented the culmination of an even greater personal battle. Lot. You can come into games, and if you miss them, you, you sometimes get a chance again. Not always, but Coach Braden and some of the other players on the sidelines said you're going to get another chance. And they were at the end of the it. evening, after all the reporters have come and gone, I had a chance to think about my own life and what I had gone through. I had been through a devastating illness a year and a half before. I'd had four surgeries. I woke up weighing 123 pounds, didn't know if I would see the next day. I was convinced my football career was over. And for whatever reason, the Lord gave me a second chance to play. My life was 
lived out in this football game where I'm given a second chance, which never happens. It doesn't happen. The next week, San Diego went from tropical Miami to 59 below zero Cincinnati. Caught in a frozen crossfire, the Chargers broke down as the Bengals advanced to Super Bowl 16. The following season, Miami exacted a measure of revenge in the divisional playoff. They dominated San Diego as David Woodley ran and passed the Dolphins to victory 34 to 13. Miami, not San Diego, would advance to Super Bowl 17. But for both teams, the epic in Miami was an event never to be surpassed. The rarest of moments where the struggle of battle was far more memorable than who won or lost. For 71 minutes and 27 seconds, the game of football was played on a field of honor, never to be forgotten by those who participated that day. Really, for all of us that played in that game, that was our defining moment. It was for Kella, uh, for Dan, certainly was for me, and uh, I'm just, uh, just delighted that I have that kind of memory to take with me. This NFL Films production is a presentation of the National Football League.